Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Paper Crafting Saturday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Well, it's the weekend. I've had a really busy week and I'm happy to um, catch up on a little paper crafting today. This is going to be one of those videos that um, may go on for a little bit longer. So I hope you have your coffee. I have mine. And I have, a, I have an idea of making a fancy fold Valentine card. And I'm going to be using supplies from uh, brand new items from Stamping Up and I'm also going to be using some retired items that I love and um, and this is going to be a kind of a masculine valentine it's going to be non-traditional colors and um, and right now I just as I said I haven't I have an idea of what I want to do but I haven't tried it out yet so I don't know where this is going to take us, so this may be one of those kind of uh, rambling background videos that you listen to while you're busy doing other things. So let me check and make sure that you can see me. And there it is. Okay, I've got it. And here's Vic, uh, Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. Nice to see you here. So I'm going to show you a project that I made some time ago. I'll give you a close-up of this. Um, this was a box that I made using the Ever Eden suite. And this was a, a suite that I particularly liked. And this is a box that would be a project for more of the avid crafter. So it also has some machine stitching on the lid decoration. And it features this beautiful um, cotton paper, which I believe is on the clearance rack right now. And I love this stuff. It came in a package of 12 by 12 sheets and there were two colors in there, the soft succulent and the um, evening evergreen. And you could do all, it's, it's actually an extremely fine piece of, of cotton and it acts something like a very sheer fabric and a very thin paper mixed together. And what I did on the cover here was I heat embossed it with a design from the, um, the Eden stamp set. And then I just stitched it down on top of this card. And, um, and so since it's been on the clearance rack, I went ahead and I, and I stocked up on some of it. So I thought I would try this color palette again today. And just in case you're curious, I'll show you what's inside this box. Oh my goodness. It's a treasure. <laughs> so there are my favorites. And you can see that there's a, a little decoration on the, on the lid as well. Now, we're not going to be making this box today. We're going to be making something entirely different. But, um, but I will be repeating many of the materials that I've used in the making of this box. So, for instance, I'm using, well, I, I won't say I'm using it. I'll say I have out, in case I want to use it, the gold shimmer ribbon and the, um, the, the, cotton paper and let me tell you the the name of that so that you know what to look for it is called ever eden 12 by 12 cotton paper i also have some other things here so here is the uh, gold shimmer ribbon i've got the brand new decorative borders set because I think this might be very nice to heat emboss on that paper. 
And I have the Garden Gems. These are a retired product, but you know, any kind of sparkly gem would substitute. I've got some of the gold foil paper. And then I've got a piece of the DSP, and this is a specialty DSP. I think you can see it's got a little bit of gold in it. It's got this really pretty pattern. This is one of the uh, pages from the Ever Eden collection. So this is no longer available. So you could use any kind of uh, DSP. So let me get organized here for a minute. The other thing I have are the heart pack punches. And um, these, these you have to have to do this project. And if you don't have them, they are still available. Um, I don't know how much longer they will be available. These may um, retire when in April when the current annual catalog retires. They've been around for a little while. Hopefully they'll, they'll stay. And um, what's nice about these punches is that they coordinate. So you've got one with the straight edge and one with the scalloped edge. And the straight edge punch fits nicely on top of the scalloped edge so that you can add a little border. So these are going to be an integral part of the um, project today. And... I may at some point decide to do some machine stitching and when, and so I've got something new here to share with you. So I now have a new sign that says sewing, <laughs> I'll be right back. And what that means is I will mute the video so that you cannot hear the sewing machine and all the noise going on in the background, but uh, know that I am nearby and I'll be back shortly. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut my paper. Let me zoom you back out again. Oh, we've got a lot of people now. Vicki McBride Stevens, hello from Maine. I'm a huge fan of Maine, Vicki. I have spent a tremendous amount of time uh, on the Maine coast camping and painting and uh, doing uh, seascapes. Love Maine. And here's Teresa from Baton Rouge. Good morning, Teresa. Hi, Della. And Linda, you made it. So uh, we've got plenty of people here today. If you're just tuning in, um, this, this video today comes with a warning that it may be long and rambling. So it may be a, a kind of a background video. All right, so I'm just going to trim this paper down into a six by six square. Oh, and I also, I wanted to give credit for this. And, um, and I don't remember the name of the demonstrator whose video I saw, but I'm gonna look it up right now because I want to make sure that um, you can go look at her video too. Um, all right, bear with me while I go into my... Okay, her name is Helen Wilson, and this is called the Valentine's Heart Clothes Envelope and Card. Valentine's Heart Clothes Envelope and Card from Helen Wilson. So um, go check out her video. Now I'm going to grab my ruler and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little pencil mark in the center so I'm just I want this to be as precise as possible. So I'm going to take my time to get that lined up. And I'm just going to put a little light X in the center. Some of you may remember this. And um, it's, a, it's got a wonderful, very clever closing mechanism. 
and um, and I hope it works. So fingers crossed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my point. Let me zoom you in a little bit more. So you can see I've got a, a very light X in the center of my six by six square. Now you may be able to do this with the cardstock. I didn't want to try because I figured that the paper needed to be a little bit thinner for this to work well. So I'm just going to go around and do the same thing on all four quarters, keeping this as precise as possible. This is where a trimmer is really an essential tool. Unless, unless you have a drafting table with a T-square and a slide rule and all those things, or, or a May line, which I have, um, the paper trimmer will do the same thing with a lot less space and a lot less expense. All right, so there it is. And I've got something that looks like this. So this is going to be the envelope for my card. And I said I've got a little bit of a gap over here. So I just want to check that. Make sure this is where it needs to be. Okay. Burnish down those sides. Now, what I want to do is I'm grabbing my cotton paper now, and I'm going to show you how thin it's almost. So the, a lot. I don't think a lot of people played with this product very much. It feels like tissue paper. So it feels like something that's going to tear really easily, but it's not. It's, it's wonderfully strong because it's made of cotton, just not some uh, fine, um, it's not, it's, take my word for it. It's not like tissue paper at all. All right, now for this, I'm going to Cut a slightly smaller square. So instead of cutting it at six inches, I'm going to cut it at five and three quarters. And this might be too big, but I'm going to start here. If it needs to be smaller, I can always cut it down. this in half diagonally so I'm just matching up my corners in the track and again I want this to be as accurate as possible so I'm taking my time and then I'm going to do the same thing this way and hold that together. All right, so I've got my little triangles now. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, um, I need a much smaller triangle. So I actually need to cut these down. I was thinking I could save time by doing it that way, but I forgot to account for all the extra material that was being used on the other side. So what I'm looking for is just a little triangular portion. So the quicker way, the do as I say, not as I do method, would have been to take a 
square that measured two and a quarter. So in fact, let me show you that. I'm gonna do it the right way instead of telling you the right way. So forget everything I just did. You're gonna take your paper, you're gonna cut it at two and a quarter. And that looks good. Two and a quarter, and you're going to need two of these. save these other triangles for something else. Now, I'm going to cut these in half. Alright, so there are my pieces. Okay, so what I want is a little bit of this paper to fit on each one of these triangles. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is, I'm looking at my decorative borders stamps, and I'm thinking that this one is going to be just the right size. get out my heat embossing materials. So I've got my Versamark ink and my stamp pad. I'll do it this way. I just want to get this centered on here. I'm just going to go and do the same thing on all four. I have my, my gold embossing powder. I'm just going to pick this up from the corner. So there's one. There's two. Three. 
last one. There we go. And I'm going to have to plug in my heat tool. I haven't used it for a little while. I always uh, unplug my heat tool when I'm not using it because I just, you know, if the kitten knocked it over and somehow managed to turn it on, that could be a fire hazard. So just to be safe, I unplug it. And sweep off a little bit of that excess powder there. I don't mind if a little bit of the gold dust gets scattered around because um, I like the added sparkle. But that, <clears throat> excuse me, that was a big blob, so I didn't want that. All right, so I'm, I'm going to use my heat tool now, and it is noisy, so I'm going to mute the video so you don't have to hear that noise. Okay, so here are my little sparkly embellishments. Now what I want to do is I want to crumple up these papers. So I want them to be nice and wrinkly to add extra texture. That's the other thing that's really nice about this paper is that you can crumple it up and get some really, really interesting texture with it. All right. Now, I'm going to just dot them with a little bit of glue on the back. And um, I'm keeping this away from the edges because I am going to machine stitch these down. And I don't want my, the needle on my sewing machine to get all gooped up with glue. So this, um, these little dots of glue are just to hold it in place. I also, I don't want it to, now that I've crumpled it up, I don't want it to be too flat either. So I just want to tack it down long enough so that I can uh, sew.
Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. And now this is the portion of the program where I'm going to go sew these things down. It's going to take me just a couple of minutes. If you want to go refresh your coffee or tea or check your email, now is the time. But I will be back shortly.
Okay, sorry, that did take a little bit longer than I expected because I jammed my machine. Um, I am not an experienced sewer, so every time I do this, it's always an adventure. I'm just going to trim these ends, clean this up a little bit, and then I'll show you how it came out. My mother was an excellent sewer, but um, I was too busy running around outside and getting into things to learn how to be a good sewer from my mom. But she learned because when she was a girl, she was a roller skater and she competed. And she needed to have those cute little outfits to wear during the competitions. And so she taught herself how to sew. And, um, and she sewed for most of her life. And then um, she got so good at it that she was able to make suits and, uh, and all sorts of fancy stuff. So I'm just gonna um, use my kneaded rubber eraser to remove those pencil lines on the inside of my envelope. All right, so now here's what it looks like so far. And I think, I think you can begin to get a sense now of why I love, love, love this cotton paper so much. So to be able to crumple it up and stitch it and to heat emboss it. As I mentioned, it is on sale right now. Um, it's in the clearance rack. And, uh, and I will be um, putting that information below in the video of all the supplies that I use today or things that I think would make a good substitute for uh, some of the things that are retired. So that's my outside of my envelope so far. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to add a piece of the green paper to the inside. But this time, um, I think I'll use the Evening Evergreen. And I just, what I want to do is I want to line it so that you don't see all that stitching. So for this, I'm going to cut my cotton paper at not quite six inches. So I'm going to go to um, five and seven eighths. So it's just a little bit smaller than the outer. Oh, Susie's here. Hi, Susie. Nice to see you. My stepmom taught me and bought me a machine for my wedding gift. I love how you posted be right back. That was cool. Well, thank you, Susie. Um, you know, one of the things that has prevented me from doing much of the sewing on the lives is because I'm so uh, not very good at it. And anything horrible could happen. But... I really wanted to be able to show you. Okay, now here, there's two sides to this paper. There's the shiny side and there's the matte side. I'm actually, I think I wanna use the matte side. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going to use the reverse side because it has more of that sort of a fabric look to it. But, um, but yeah, no, I got the idea this morning that, well, you know, paper crafting Saturday, Saturday tends to be a longer video for me. And, um, and you're watching as I make all my mistakes and experiments and everything else. So 
If you don't mind having the video run in the background while you're busy doing your own crafting or, or just listening, then, um, then yeah, I can take a couple of minutes and do a little bit of um, stitching. And if you, if you don't have time to watch, you can always watch the replay. So, so good. I'm glad. I'm glad that worked out for you. All right. So now, let's see if I can get this on here nicely. It's almost like a uh, the lining of a coat or something. Move that over a little tiny bit. Get my bone folder. All right, so far so good. <laughs> I really like the way it's turning out so far, but um, the the hardest part is yes yet to come. So fingers crossed. All right, this is actually really sweet. Um, I don't know how much of a sense of it you can get through the camera, but it's just, it's, it's nice. It, um, ah, you know, this cotton paper, I'm so sorry that um, it didn't take off the way like the um, Distress Gold paper did. Um, a lot of people just didn't experiment with this cotton paper, and, it, and it's really wonderful. And that it comes in the soft succulent and the evening evergreen, I think, is a real bonus, because I love these colors. All right, so there, there's my little project so far. All right, and there's the back. Now, if this was a standalone envelope, then you could do something really pretty with the back. You could use the soft succulent paper and do a, a more elaborate design, like a medallion or, so for instance, you know, you could do a couple of corners with things like that, put, put this twice. Um, I'm not going to be decorating the back of the envelope. First of all, it would take way too long for this video. But I'm also thinking that I may want to glue it down either on a card base or in a journal. So, um, so I, wanted, I didn't want to get involved with the back this time. But you may want to. All right, now we move on to the next step. And for this, I'm going to get my gold foil paper. And then I'm going to see if I can find my ribbon, which just fell down. And I'm going to use the scalloped punch. That's this one. And I'm going to cut out four hearts. Okay, so there they are. Here's the part that I haven't really thought through. So I want to use my plain heart. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to use cardstock for now. So here is some soft succulent cardstock. Now, um, 
This might be a good opportunity for um, more heat embossing or stamping or even using a designer series paper. But for the sake of this little prototype, I'm just going to use the plain soft succulent. See how that looks. That looks okay. Um, and when we see how this, this turns out, you all may decide to do something different. And in fact, please, you know, I, I really urge you if, you, if you're somebody that follows along with my live videos and you'd like to share what you make or, or what maybe um, I've inspired you to make, please um, say hello so I know who you are here in the comments. And then go to Dandelion Paper Pals group and ask to be invited in, and I will let you in. And in that group, you are welcome to post your creations and see what everybody else is doing. Okay, so now the, um, you know that when you use the um, metallic foil papers, that it takes just a little bit longer for it to dry because the paper is not absorbent. So you wanna be careful not to fuss with it too much. Just get it set up and put it, put it aside so it can take the extra minute or two to, to dry. And the, the other reason why I thought that it would be a good idea to use the cardstock rather than a DSP for the, for the little hearts is that um, these hearts are going to um, get a lot of abuse. They're going to be handled quite a bit and manipulated every time you want to open and close the envelope. So I thought that this would help the, um, the hearts to hold up to that. Uh-oh, running out of glue now. There we go. Okay. So there are my hearts. Okay, and I'm going to give them just a second to dry. Okay, um, while they're drying, I'm going to start on the card because there's going to be a card on the inside of the envelope. I'm going to get my trimmer back out again. Okay, and this time I'm using the Evening Evergreen. I'm just going to open up this pack real quick. For your card, you're going to need a piece that measures four by eight. So I'm going to start by cutting off a piece of four inch and then I'm going to score it at four inches and then I'm going to remove a half an inch and that should give me my four by four card. I've got a little bit of a edge there. I'm just going to trim that off. Didn't do a good job of cutting there. There we go. That's perfect. Danette. Hi, Danette. 
Everybody, everybody's home today. Nice to see you all. Okay, so this is a four by four card base. I'm using the Evening Evergreen. So I'll have to put a uh, little insert for my message. So I think what I want to do with the Evening Evergreen paper, the uh, color that they used is white. So I'm gonna grab my, um, my standard white paper. I will cut this down um, to three and a half. And three and a half. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this in here loosely because I may want to stamp it, but I'll have it ready to go. All right, and then um, and then the cover is going to have some kind of design on it. I haven't gotten that far yet, but it will fit inside the envelope like so. All right, so that's what we have so far. And now I'm hoping that my hearts have dried enough that I can attach them. And feels okay feels like they could slide a little bit if I pushed really hard so I'm going to be very careful with them all right so now what what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my hearts to the envelope so that the point is equal to that little dip on the inside of the heart and um, looks something like this it's I'm going to I'm going to apply it just a teensy bit lower all right just to be safe all right so so just just like that and I'm going to apply my glue in a kind of a diamond shape. Now, if this doesn't work out, I will figure it out and I will tell you what I did to make it work. But fingers crossed, I'm gonna take the plunge here and hopefully it will work. Now the heart is covering up quite a bit of the gold embossing, but there's just enough there that adds a cute little embellishment, so, so I don't mind. Just want to kind of eyeball it to make sure that you have equal shapes on either side that your heart is straight Now here's something, as the, the glue takes its time to dry with the non-absorbent metallic paper, it does dry really fast on the very absorbent cotton paper. 
So just be mindful of that. Take your time and try to get that where you want it in the first go. Okay. I'm going to use a tiny bit more glue on this one. I do want to make sure that these corners stay down. Okay, so you may want to check, make sure that they're all have a little dot of glue on them so that they stay secure. This one looks pretty good, but I'm going to do it a little bit extra just in case. Okay, now we need a drum roll because we're going to see if this is going to be a fail or if it's going to be great. But this is what you have so far. Now what you're going to do is, and I think I will save the decoration of the note card for after. So. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to place it in here. And then you're going to flop these over one by one. And then this last one is going to tuck in. And there it is. Okay, so there is your envelope with the heart closure. Now I do have a little bit of bowing on mine, okay? So um, you could go two ways with this. It's actually really pretty like that. So if you're if you're giving your um, your Valentine to somebody on a flat surface like that, that could be really charming. Having that added little dome shape, okay? However. If you want to place this in a journal, then you may want to push the hearts down a tiny bit. So what I would advise you to do is just do a little mock-up with some scrap paper. Don't get all crazy like I just did and, you know, with all the stitching and the heat embossing because it could be a, a disaster, <laughs> thankfully. Um, my Actually... You know what? As I keep pressing on it, it is getting nice and flat. All right, so so maybe I'm I'm speaking to. I think I think it's just getting a little more compacted in the center, and it's fine. All right, well there it is. There is this adorable, very fancy little Valentine. Now of course I've got my. Where'd they go? I've got my embellishments. So these were the garden gems, and they have these wonderful, interesting little shapes. So that's a possibility. I've got my beautiful gold shimmer ribbon, which could be added to the packet. It's not necessary, but it could be a pretty little embellishment. So let's just see how that looks. I mean, these hearts are going to hold that shut very securely. But I think what I would do, and what I will probably do off camera, is I will make a um, some kind of a, a little cluster, maybe. 
with um, some die cuts and some um, sparkly embellishments and just put that on underneath here with a with a bunch of things poking out all right well that is my video for today thank you so much for putting up with my experimentation and my um, long gaps I'm so happy to see you all I'm just checking to see if anybody has any questions. There's Shelly. Hi, Shelly. And Kelly says, such a beautiful layout. Well, you know, check out Nancy Wilson. I think that's her name. And um, see her video, because she kept it a little more simple, simple than I did. Um, but, okay, I don't, I don't see any questions. But thank you all so much for joining me. I love this. Okay, and I'll tell you the reason why I love it is because of that extra lining that I put on the inside. It just, it makes it feel so nice. It makes it, it it's almost like it gives it the feeling that it, that it is a, a, some kind of a, a textile or a fabric project rather than just flimsy paper. It just makes it feel like it's really something special. All right. Well, I think that's it. I will post more pictures as they develop. Thank you again for watching. I will be back on Monday for Marvelous Monday at 12 noon. Don't forget that we are in the midst of celebration. So if you do decide to make some purchases and you spend $50 or more, you will be eligible to select free product. And I will have all those links below. So stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.